What is up everybody? I'm no looks given and today we are going to be taking a look at a game that features a whole bunch of sweet treasures from the newest patch, kind of like my video a few days ago, except this time we're going to be taking a look at Wonder Waddle. And Wonder Waddle is great for seeing a whole bunch of treasures, especially because there were a bunch of tier 2 treasures added in the most recent patch. For the most part, I really do like to skip tier 2 treasures on Wonder Waddle so that I can focus on finding Hatball, but some of the tier 2 treasures that have been added are good enough that you might just want to take them, and especially the Puzzle Rune, which is probably in the thumbnail, so I'm not spoiling too much, but the Puzzle Rune is really, really insane on Wonder Waddle because Wonder Waddle can make treasures easier than any other hero. Now, the one caveat to that is, do you want XP on Wonder Waddle? Because once you start picking up some XP, then it gets harder to find those Tier 2 and Tier 3 animals. Nothing new from this Polywoggle triple, so I'm just going to skip out on that before sharding over the Sherwood Sure Shot. I waited to shard at this turn because I figured the Sherwood Sure Shot would be stronger for us on the previous combat, but I do want to shard it here just to see if we can find Kitty Cup first, because that would make this turn absolutely amazing, and we could be really strong there, and then at that point, probably just pick up like whatever treasure would come in at tier two. Um, we are going to wind up losing this one as well, uh, taking four damage down to 33, but that's okay. Wonder Waddle can take some damage early on in the game and recover. Uh, there is some interesting options this turn. I wind up going for Crafty, after I did so, and you can see I'm like kind of debating it there, um, I do debate should I have just cast Luna's Grace and then rolled for animals or potentially just double rolled trying to find more blind mice because that is a huge power spike this early on into the game. And I think it might have been been the correct play. In hindsight, this play winds up being so much better because, as we will see in a second, uh, this Jax Giant that we are playing up against just didn't connect. Uh, so I wouldn't have been able to slay with Polywoggle regardless. So I guess uh, calculated. I'll pick up a pair of animals here and then a Genie's Wish. And this is, uh, yeah, these are some nice pickups. At this point, uh, going to move the uh, board around a little bit so that way I, I really do want Kitty Cup Purse attacking first, though it's tricky because I'd also like I care about the Slay from Poliwoggle more than I care about the Slay from Kitty Cup Purse. I'd rather get the Poliwoggle upgraded. But I'm thinking now that it didn't slay the first turn, maybe I should just hang on to it and try to slay with Polywoggle on 4.0. It's not making my board any worse for this turn. I'm just taking a hit next turn and then the turn after that because like I would have an upgraded Polywoggle, an upgraded tier 4 unit next turn if it was able to slay. So I'm like theoretically taking a hit for next turn, a small one, with a potential much bigger payoff down the line. So I do think that that is worth pursuing here. And then we actually have enough stats here to battle through and get a win with our prized pig. So feeling pretty good. I'll get to pick up a stag, a forbidden fruit, and then roll for a little bit of animals. I'll pick up a pair of donkeys to round things out and primarily looking for hat ball here, but I'm gonna go for treasure map. I think that we can maybe make something work with that. There is always something a little bit awkward when you're playing Wonder Waddle and find a treasure map because I don't really care about tier 5 treasures when I'm playing Wonder Waddle. They're just too awkward. Like Staff of the Old Toad turns off your hero power. Hand of Midas, it's too early to make use of. The other treasures that just give you stats are fine, but you're going to replace them anyways. So what I'm going to instead try to do with treasure map is either get a triple of like golden chicken, black cat, or kitty cup purse so that I can get a tier four treasure because there's some cool things that I like there. Or of course, get a triple of blind mouse and grab a tier six treasure. So either of those things I think will be a lot better for me. And I actually make it out of this turn with two bonus gold from prized pig. Uh, pretty insane stuff. And then wait, 13. Did my opponent have a prize pig as well? Wait, now I have to go back. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's it's four bonus gold, and then my opponent must have had a prize pig too. Let me go back and see that, because I was totally missing that here. If my opponent had 
No, they didn't have a prized pig. Oh, Kitty Cup Purse Slade. Sorry. Okay. A little bit of a brain fart. Uh, but Kitty Cup Purse Slays, and we had two prized pigs surviving. Uh, so five bonus gold on this turn. Pretty sweet. Plus, we can sell off the golden chicken. And that is enough that I think I can also pick up this Wizard's Familiar and hunt for a triple with that as well. So that is going to be part of the plan. And uh, we'll see what we can find. We find a stag, and I do consider it, but I am ultimately going to just roll past it, and then I'll double up on this Wizard's Familiar and grab a Forking Rod, and that seems pretty great to me. Now I can feed something to the Kraken, get four more bonus gold, and potentially pick up some other sweet units for the turn, and I'm going to use that to try to slay with Poliwoggle by picking up this Sporko, and... Then this is probably what I am working with here. We can rock on to, or lock on to Golden Chicken. Rock on Golden Chicken. Um, oh, is there a chicken? What is the chicken? Is it called Chicken Rock or, or like Chicken Little? What's the... There's definitely a rock and roll chicken, right? And oh, isn't that even what Golden Chicken is like kind of based off of? It's got like the kind of uh, Elvis hair and stuff. I think so. Rock and Robin. Is that it? It's a robin. I think so. Anyways, we wind up grabbing one bonus gold from this combat and then a little bit of bonus gold from the chicken. And I like a few options here. Great library card is really good with the forking rod. There was also a rune stones, which we could have potentially used to help ourselves find hatball. And once we have the library card, there's definitely some incentive to just pick up some XP uh, because that is one of the things that the library card shines it doing. But I'm gonna use the library card to uh, True Love's Kiss and grab a pumpkin uh, from the upgraded shoulder fairies that we got from the Poliwoggle. And all of that, I think, is really powerful. I'm really not pursuing XP heavily because I want to try to find Crystal Ball if possible. I think that is just still insanely huge on Wonder Waddle. And I will pick up a prize pig and we find the Merlin's Hat, which isn't the one that I wanted to find, but it still is synergistic with Forking Rod and Great Library Card. So there's some potential shenanigans that, that could come into play here. Great Pumpkin is going to be pretty great for us nonetheless and just allow us to be quite strong here and walk away with a win as well as the donkey that also summoned an additional unit there i pick up the kitty cup purse looking for i don't know i mean it's free if we skip the treasure though i actually don't think i'm going to skip the treasure i think i'm going to take skip's puzzle rune uh rather than skip the treasure there and then mask ball with three different four cost units and a forking rod I think is just too good to pass up. So I'm going to go for the mask ball here as well, kind of like a make your own clock tower when you've got forking rod and pick up a mask ball. Uh, but this is going to be really, really strong for us. I'm going to grab a Hercules, which will potentially let us grab a tier six treasure. And Sporko synergizes well with that too, because now Herc only needs four hits to connect. Then I also pick up Jormungand just for being a large unit. But Definitely feeling strong right now. I'm the lobby leader sans the 40 health fallen angel looking a little bit scary, uh, but everything else is looking quite good here. And then, uh, yeah, just this German game gets to be massive. Got, I've got an upgraded pumpkin. It really seems like I did clock tower this game, and that's what I would be assuming if I was playing against a comp like this with the, uh, I don't know how you get the golden pumpkin out of that though. That is a little bit nutty, but everything else is looking really sweet. I could look for some more polywoggles. We still have the Sporko going on. So going to pick up that and then I find the blind mouse. So that's really good. And I definitely want to take a treasure here and replace the puzzle rune. And that is going to make it so now we are level five or level six rather next turn. I'll pick up the Blessing of Athena for a little bit more stats. Unfortunately, the Hercules is just short of completing, so a little bit awkward. And then I'm going to throw the Polywoggle in. I think I might even... No, I do play the Polywoggle. Um, I was debating, I think, between the Polywoggle and the Kitty Cup Purse, but I'm not going to play the Polywoggle next turn once I'm already level six, so... 
I'll just try to play it here. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, the Hercules just falling a little bit short. The uh, Polywoggle also going to fall a little bit short. That won't be able to slay, but we will be able to walk away with some bonus gold and we steal an opponent's treasure map. Interestingly, we can steal a Merlin's hat. You can steal a treasure that you already have a copy of, uh, but we now have a ton of gold because we won the prized pig. We had the Krampus's sleigh. Uh, so we've got 20 gold on uh, 6.0 here. So pretty good. I'm going to wind up picking up the spinning gold just so that way I can spend the rest of my gold on tier 6 units. And I do realize here that good boy might not be the worst thing in the world because it could pump up Hercules, though we could also use Baba Yaga to pump up Hercules. I'm going to realize that in a moment after moving some other things around. Uh, we can't crack the pumpkin because we've got the uh, other thing going and then I just pick up Echo Wood because that's going to be good regardless of what comp we go into. And then yeah, real quick here at the end, I'm going to realize that we can actually get Hercules up to 30 so that that will connect and give us a tier 7 treasure this turn actually. So that is going to be really sweet for us. We'll make use of the treasure map on that. And then we will also have some extra cash with this spinning gold, uh, denying my opponent's cramp as a slave. Everybody just passed that treasure map around. That'd be really funny, but yeah. Then we're going to get Radiant Prism. Uh, Radiant Prism, just super powerful. It's interesting on Wonder Waddle. I don't actually wind up making use of it, but we, if we see any pairs of any tier two or tier three units, we can just grab them for a treasure. I'm still like debating do I want to try to make Hatball work? And I'm not sure, but I do know that I definitely want a good boy at this point because we can pump that up with everything and it will pump up everything. So that's really good, but we can even use like this Ashwood Elm to pump that up a little bit. So all of that seems really great. And then just looking for some more ways to make use of the Radiant Prism. And that's basically going to be any tier six unit. We could take this Oni Tyrant here, though I don't think I'm going to go for that. I am going to go for the uh, Burning Palm, though. That's pretty sweet. And then I'll grab another Pumpkin King before locking onto a Knighthood for the good boy. And that'll give the good boy a whole bunch more stats to doubly pass around. And that'll be really good. We spawn a full front row of Baba Yagas with our Pumpkin King. So pretty sweet. My opponent pretty nice and they've got this Drax Saber stuff going on too, though I do feel like we are pretty big. My opponent has a bunch of ranged units and they are going to take the win. So a little bit awkward, but after we grab onto this Knighthood, I think that it is going to be pretty tough to lose. And then we could take another Ashwood Elm. It's not the craziest idea in the world, though I think that there's better things that we can come up with, and I do think that I ultimately wind up passing up on this Ashwood Elm in favor of some greater pastures. Something like Kidnap could also be good, probably not good enough to lock for, but if we see another Kidnap in the future, we can Forking Rod it, and we can play basically any units that we find in this comp, so we could make it all work. Um, one thing I should probably support the uh, Baba Yaga on the good boy just to give it a little bit more attack even and um that would also get the baba yaga attacking first which is like maybe good considering the good boy isn't giving that much health to echo wood it's only giving it uh well 62 now but uh much less so last turn uh jormagand is going to survive because of the good boy i believe there so that is pretty sweet and then we will crack open our pumpkin and that should be enough to do my opponent in here well it's a ghost so not a huge deal regardless but i think there are a lot of interesting ways that we can take this um i'm really tempted to just shard of the ice queen on on Hercules, grab an upgraded evil unit, and then I get an Oni Tyrant. And I think that this is actually fine, an upgraded Oni Tyrant, probably not something that I would want to pay for, but it is really good and it is really good with Court Wizard too. So I'm gonna sell off my prize pig, throw in the Court Wizard, and then I'm potentially looking to put in Jormagand. Um, one thing that I am considering here is if I'm able to grab a tier six treasure, that is really, really sweet because it will allow us to potentially, maybe not definitely, but potentially grab a ninth Book of Merlin, which is how we take this comp to just 
a whole nother level. And that would be really sweet. But for right now, we've got Oni King pumping up Good Boy, Good Boy pumping up everything else, and then Oni Tyrant also pumping up the Court Wizard, which gets to attack when anything dies. So the Court Wizard will get to be pretty big by the end of it, assuming my opponent can attack into and kill any of my units, which, because we're playing up against the Ghost again, doesn't look like it's actually going to be a thing. We're not even going to have our good boy die, and we're just going to continue to be really strong. And there's probably only one or two turns left of this game. We're on to the top two. I'm going to throw my great pumpkin in a croc, and then pick up a lordy. And I think that that is a great use of my resources from here. I'm also going to lock because there is a lucky coin on our last shop of the turn. Though maybe I'll pick up the court wizard. Um, I haven't fully made up my mind because I'd want to backline the court wizard and I don't really want to frontline the Oni King. Um, but all of this is still fabulous. Uh, the Lordy is going to give everything plus 14, plus 14 to start the combat. And then when the good boy attacks, it will get another plus 20, plus 20. So what's that? That's uh, 27, 47 uh, attack at least. And that'll give a whole bunch of stats to the rest of my crew here when that eventually gets in. Uh, yeah, 47. That's what I said, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, and that's just going to make everything absolutely massive, including this court wizard and even including the croc. And then the court wizard is just going to get a bunch of triggers off of that. And because my entire front line is upgraded from the upgraded pumpkin, it's actually enough to just take my opponent out there as well. So that's going to be a pretty sweet game, I think, that focused on or rather showcased a bunch of sweet stuff from the newest patch Puzzle Rune, definitely really, really easy to activate on Wonder Waddle. Just have to keep in mind if you want XP on Wonder Waddle, but if you do, it's a pretty easy way to get it and you can do some pretty fantastic stuff from there. That is going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.